When they returned to the West City, Bulma and the others gathered around outside in the backyard where they brought tools before they prepared. Kagomi brought the weapons for them for training. However, she needed to train with Goku and Vegeta. She watched Bulma stand raising her arms widely with a grin look. Okay, everybody, now we have all the tools, but we need a school bus, Bulma announced grinning. But how are we gonna get a school bus mom? Trunks asked curiously. She hummed as she placed her hand onto her chin. Well, um. Goku chuckled as he placed his forehead with his finger. Don't worry, Bulma. I'll get the school bus for you. Huh? Then she watched Goku teleport away as everyone stayed quiet. Then Goku came back with the school bus, which shocked everyone. One of Kagami's old group began to ask her how he teleported, but she says it was complicated. Bulma cleared her throat after she was surprised. Well, okay then. Well done, Goku. Now it'll take a while for me to build the school bus. You guys go train. But my. I needed your help since you're having my grandchild. Future Mai blushed heavily as she looked away. I couldn't wait to meet my future grandchild. Bulma exclaimed excitedly. Couldn't wait to meet our child as well, woman Vegeta said, smirking. Then he began to cuddle her as he embraced her gently. She giggled with react as she cuddled back. Now let's build us a school bus time machine comma, shall we? Bulma suggested after they stopped hugging. Or let's get training, Vegeta said. Let's go to Lord Beerus' place, Goku suggested. Kagomi nodded in response. Then Goku took her hand and Vegeta placed his hand onto his back then teleported away. Huh? Where did Kagomi go? Inuyasha panicked as he looked around. I think Goku said they went to Lord whoever's name is placed, Sango told him. Lord Beerus, dear? Bulma reminded them. Whoa. Okay, guys. Let's go training. Future Trunks said as he and the others began to train. One hour later, Kahaku was training with his older sister, Sango. He was panting as he stood a few feet away from her. He was training hard to protect Rin and Kana, while the others would go to Future Trunks' future timeline to fight against Goku Black and Zamasu. It had been a while since he last trained with Sango. He was glad that he was able to live again. Let's take a break, Kahaku. Sango suggested, smiling. Okay, sis, Kahaku replied, letting out a sigh of relief and sitting down on the ground. You've been training hard ever since we got back, Kahaku. Sango said as she sat down beside him. Yeah, I want to become strong to protect my friends and family, Kahaku said with a smile. That's a good reason, Kahaku. That is a good thing you must do, Sango said with a smile. Sango. Yes? Sango asked. Do you think that you'll be able to defeat Zamzu and Black? Kahaku asked. He was worried for his older sister. He didn't want to lose her just when they were finally reunited. After all, Sango is the only family member he has left. Somehow, Sango could tell that Kahaku was worried about them going against future Trunks enemies. They are just as strong as demons as well. But there might be a chance of winning against Zamasu and Goku Black. Well if Kagami and the others were able to defeat Naraku, then I believe that we'll be able to defeat Zamasu and Black, Sango said, smiling again. I know you will, Sango. Kahaku replied, smiling once more. His sister's words somehow calm his worried heart. She was right, there is a chance of victory. Gureshi. Koga yelled as lightning was released from his steel claw like a weapon. Future Gotten brought out his Dragonbane sword and aimed at Koga. Both of their attacks clashed and soon disappeared. Nice one, Gotten. Koga exclaimed, standing a few feet away from him. Thanks, Koga. Future Gotten said, smiling. You've gotten good at your attacks. I have to admit that they're just as powerful as mine. Koga grinned at him with arms crossed. Really? Future Gotten asked, excitedly. Yup. Koga replied as he stood in front of Future Gotten, still, arms folded, by the way. Will you be ready to go against Black and Zamasu? Then Future Shippo appeared with a smirk, standing behind his best friend and placing his hand onto his shoulders. Always ready? Future Gotten chuckled with reaction. Then he faced Koga and said, even though they're unstoppable and powerful, we have to defeat them to bring peace to our future timeline. I agree with you fully on that one, Gotten. But there might be a chance that you won't survive this battle. Koga said, Are you going to risk it anyway? This is my family, my friends. I will do everything I can for them. Future Gotten said, filling with detonation. Koga was shocked for a moment, then he smiled softly at him. He could tell that this boy wanted to protect those who were precious to him, especially future Rin. Then he placed his hand on his head. Well said, kiddo. Otherwise, your father will be proud of you. Koga said, grinning as he ruffled his black spiky hair. Future Gotten smiled as he gazed at the wolf demon. 
Tadose sat beside Momo along with Myoga, who was sitting on top of Momo's head, sat near the edge of Inuyasha's forest as they watched the villagers work, he could see them training at the field, which he figured was Kagami's group, he smiled at this, seeing them they have the weapons that he have made for them, he had a good feeling that Lord Inu no Taisho would be proud of his sons now, they both have someone to protect, someone very precious to them, Tadose and Mayoga heard footsteps coming towards them, they soon saw Kid walking towards them, Lady Kid, what are you doing here? Mayoga asked, jumping onto Tadose's shoulder, I wanted to take a little break, so I thought I would come up here, and join the three of you, if you don't mind of course, Kid said, you're very welcome too, Kid, Mayoga said with a kind smile, thank you, Kid said, then she walked over near Momo and sat down next to him, Tadose Mayoga, are you too worried about something? Kid asked, I'm wondering if future Trunks enemies will be defeated by Kagami's pack Mayoga said, I have great faith that they will, Mayoga, Kid replied. How do you guess that? Tadose asked. There are some things that an old woman knows. Besides, they have each other to rely on. Kid murmured with a closed eye smile. Even though, Inuyasha and Sashamaru can't stand each other, right? Tadose asked. Indeed. I suppose you're right, Lady Kid, Mayoga replied. Very good, Kagami. Keep going. Goku shouted. Okay. Kagomi shouted back as she transformed into the legendary Super Miko, and brought out her sword. They stood across from each other with their blades ready. A breeze blew their hair and leaves danced amongst them. Then Kagomi and Goku headed straight towards each other, and their swords clashed against each other. It was that way for about an hour until Goku's Sengoku's sword was wrenched out of his hand, and landed a few feet away from him. Even though he loves to use hand to hand, because it was way better than using a sword. Kagami's sword was pointed at his chin. I win, Kagami said with a smirk. Goku sighed when she lowered her blade. He knew it would take a while to get the hang of his swordsmanship. Don't worry, Goku. If you mastered swordsmanship once, you can master it once more. Kagami said. Then she walked over and grabbed his Sengoku sword. Thanks, Kags, Goku said, smiling a little as Kagami handed him his new sword. Okay then. Let's do it again, Kagomi said. Okay, Goku said, nodded. Time's up, Vegeta, with Cetasi and Lord Beerus stood in front of Vegeta holding his final Gallic gun twin blades who was panting after slashing all the dummies. What records do I have? Vegeta breathed out. 52 out of 60 dummies. Great job, Vegeta, Wiss said happily. I have to admit that was impressed, Vegeta, but I don't know how you got those twin blades. Lord Beerus said, sounded lazy. Well, Vegeta has progressed a lot. More than I expected, comma, my lord, Wiss replied. Smiling, Lord Beerus looked back at the prince. Even though I was convinced you were going to use your special attack, he said, like I had to show you before. Vegeta smirked. I'll do it when I fight Black and Zamasu. Then he dropped his twin blades and summoned his key blasts while smirking. I'll make every second of their existence a hell. The sound of their body is pierced over, and over will be music to my ears. Whiz sweat dropped. Okay then, let's take a break from now it, um, did I say it right? Vegeta asked with a sweat drop. Mostly, Lord Beerus said, smirking. I win again, Goku, Kagomi said, pointing her sword at Goku's chin again. This was the third time she had beaten him at swordplay. He sighed again in defeat once Kagomi lowered her blade. I admit that you're very skilled with a sword, Kags. Goku chuckled, retrieving his sword. Thanks, Kagomi said, smiling. Then Goku put his sword away and still faced her. Let's take a break, shall we? Great idea, Goku. She replied. Whoa, how about we go somewhere? So we should go on a date together. Goku said excitedly as he lightly took her hand before teleporting away. She giggled, sure, Goku. When they arrived somewhere, Goku brought her to the place where Kagomi had never seen the yellow flower field and a beautiful view before. They stood over the yellow flower field, looking over the mountains and the view. Wow, this place is so gorgeous, Goku. Kagomi exclaimed happily, looking over the yellow flowers. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to take you there, Kags, Goku said with eyes closed and a smile. I love this place, Goku, she replied. We've been lucky since it happens all the time. Despite everything that's happened with the future timeline, this group has still been lucky. We've had a few setbacks, but I think we've done better than most. And I have been the luckiest of them all to have you in my life, Kags, Goku said as he turned to look at her, and gave her a sweet smile. Then he took her hand and began to talk to her more. You mean more to me than I thought possible. I never knew I was capable of loving someone as much as I love you, Gags. 
There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. And after everything that happened with Black and Zamasu, one thing is clear. I never want to be without you in my life. Goku continued. Then he kneeled in front of her. He saw Kagomi gasp and covered her mouth as her tears began to gather in her eyes. As he looked up at the woman he loved, he pulled out a wedding ring and said, Kagomi Higarashi, would you do me the great honor of becoming my wife? Kagami was at a loss for words. Instead, she tackled Goku and peppered his face with kisses. Goku laughed happily and wrapped his arms around her and kissed her back. Does that mean yes? Yes, Goku. For the thousands of times. Yes. Kagomi nearly shouted. Then he gently took her left hand and slipped the ring on her finger. Kagomi admired the elegant but simple design. It was perfect for her. She caressed Goku with an embrace once more as he giggled. Let's head back, Goku suggested. Good idea, Kagami said, then they teleported back to Lord Beerus' planet. Bulma panted tiredly after she has completed fixing the time machine, as she wiped the beads of sweat from her forehead. It was hard work for her, even she couldn't risk her pregnancy by working so hard. There, all fixed. Now we can all travel back to the future to save the world. Bulma said, grinning. She placed her hands onto her hips. Now we can go get the others and let them know that we're ready to go. Future Mai said, smiling. Whatever they're ready, we will always be ready. She said. Ready as ever, Bulma replied. Okay, everyone. The time machine was all fixed, and we are ready to go. Bulma announced as she saw everyone gathered around before they were ready. That's great, Bulma. Even though we didn't want you to work very hard, because you're pregnant. Kagami said with a smile. And you, too, my. Future Trunk said as he began to embrace her with his arms that making his wife giggle. And by the way, you guys. Goku and I are now engaged today. Kagami said happily, showing them her engagement ring. What? Inuyasha exclaimed in shock. Really? Bulma exclaimed happily as she placed her hands onto her hands then ran towards her and took both of her hands. Congratulations. Congratulations, Lady Kagami, Moroku said. We are happy for you, Kagami, Sango said. Does that mean Goku is going to be my dad? Shippo exclaimed excitedly. She giggled as she picked him up and placed him on her left shoulder. Yes Shippo, he's going to be your dad. And you're going to be my mom as well? Gotten asked excitedly. Yeah, Gotten. She's going to be your mom? Goku said, rubbing his hair. I prefer stepmom because your dad is going to remarry. Oh, and you can call me mom whatever you want to, Gotten. Kagomi giggled as she scratched the back of her head. Yay! Gotten exclaimed happily as he flew towards her and embraced her. Kagomi hugged him back. While this was going on, Inuyasha watched them hugging as he knew Kagomi was happy. He knew she finally found happiness, found a new family, and a new life that she ever wanted. Inuyasha was smiling as he was happy for Kagomi, that she made the right choice by gaining new friends and new family, even finding her new true love. Well, shall we get going, guys? I think everyone is waiting for us from the future. Bulma suggested with arms crossed and a smile. Kagami smiled. Great idea. Can we come with you? We want to save the future too. Future Trunks pleaded with them. Um, I don't know boys, but it will be dangerous, Kagomi said in a worried tone. Please mom. We want to go too. We can do this as a family. I promise we'll be good. Gotten pleaded with her. Goku sighed as he scratched the back of his back. All right boys, but I need you all to stay close with us and help the others as well when there's any danger. Then the two half-breed Saiyans are filling up with determination when they gave them a relief look on their faces, especially Gotten's eyes are filled with tears. We won't let you down daddy, Gotten said in detonation comma, clenching his fists. Kagami then took Gotten's hand, and so was Shippo's. Come on boys, let's go save the day as a family. Hi, they shouted happily until they entered the school bus time machine before they went back to the future timeline, and even got back to the Battle of Zamasu and Goku Black.